right, so right now, I'm doing what I had talked about before, and I'm adding, putting some resistance in between the, the board. So this is about a 200 ohm slider. Let's try it again. It wants to glitch, but it kind of seems to be killing it. It's not very reliable. I don't want to uh, install this because it's a, I don't know, it's a pain to install sliders. It's also the only like 200 ohm one I have and it's maybe not necessary. We're only using that like last little end of the, the just a slight bit of resistance, like 10 or so ohm, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Maybe 100 ohms, I guess we're right in the middle there. We were using this to probe before, uh, so we were probing through slight resistance, which seemed to do interesting things. Um, by, I think, feeding back both the negative and positive speaker terminals. Uh, I already messed with that a bit, so I might... Well, I'll probably pick those up somewhere else on the board. Um... I talked about cutting data lines, but I'm not sure it's going to be worth it with the way this is behaving. Um, what I will say is that I was thinking about cutting the data lines, and, you know, it occurs to me to use the X-Acto or the, um, the Dremel tool with a rotary disc, but actually this, uh, an engraving tool, which you can find usually relatively cheaply, has worked really well for me in the past. It doesn't kick up as much dust, uh, and it stays mostly on the board, so you can uh, just vacuum it up or knock it off or whatever. It doesn't shoot around everywhere like with a Dremel tool. So consider that for doing data line cutting. The thing that I'm mostly after with this toy is the that's the jam but I also wouldn't mind being able to get some of the glitches off of it, but I want to sample that. That's the jam. I also like to shut my fucking drawer. Oh my god. Okay. So, uh, what are we going to do here? I think we're going to pick up the, the points on the board that we're using to glitch. I think I have like a 500 ohm knob. I want a reset button. Uh, and we've already got the, the speaker, uh, jack installed, so, um, I think we're close to being in business with this. I don't want to spend too much more time screwing around with it, but I did want to show you the voltage starve that we were doing here. Talk about the data line cutting, but I'm just not going to mess with that on this toy. It's too much screwing around. I think all this needs is those, uh, like a fairly reliable, uh, glitch button with maybe a switch and a knob.
right, so we want a reset switch. These are going to be my glitch switches. I think I have my 500 ohm pot right there. So I think what'll happen, and I'll need another switch and a uh, just a toggle switch, I think, basically, so we can switch between the negative and positive uh, speaker leads and, and from the board and uh, make them the other terminal of our button, which goes to positive voltage through resistance to get it to glitch. So um, I think, well, we need our reset switch and we need our leads. Um, we already have uh, our color coding for the speaker leads, so I guess that's easy enough. Got that. I guess I was a little premature in doing these speaker uh, outs, but this shouldn't be too bad to add to. I think we'll just, well, we were going from the board, which has less resistance than the out channel, so we're going to, I think, go there for the, for the switch lead, but we'll go directly from the positive speaker lead. seem to want to do it. Good old Radio Shack strippers. Ten miles. It was 70 degrees yesterday, and today it's like 32. I had an overnight low of like 18. Storm with hail and tornadoes in February. How about that? So I'll hold on to the other other wire as well. Well, it moved on me. The joint doesn't look cold. There's a little overlap there. I'm just going to click it again. You can be uptight about this stuff or just kind of try to get it done. Oh, boy. Let's see if I can... And I'm, I'm somewhere in between that, apparently. Um, I don't want to redo the solder joint. I'm trying to just keep this kind of... Oh, 
I didn't pull up the lead either, so it looks like I did okay. Click that. Alright, I should have been wearing safety glasses for all this. We're calling that good enough. We got our leads coming from our speaker, which basically are what we were using to glitch, as I recall. Pins. Uh, <laughs> what do we say? 12 or 11. The positive voltage there. And then is that 12 there? It is. So pins 11 and 12 connecting to positive voltage through slight resistance momentarily to cause our glitching. So, pardon me. I'll try to button this back up, I guess, because I can just get, I'll just get positive voltage. From up there, we won't even go anywhere near that chip, which is honestly a good idea if you can avoid it. Oh, but you can't see anything of what I'm doing because of that reflection. All right, well, I could... sorry, guys. Um, I'm just gonna take that off of there. And then what are we going to do? We're going to probably just, we clipped this, but there's no need to leave it clipped because we're done testing for our um, uh, voltage starve. So that can go back on the board, but then we'll take a lead off of there. And, uh, yeah. Mm. Some good old salvaged wire from another old project. Hopefully, they're not um, corroded inside, but I don't think it will be. It's positive, actually. That's good. Good enough. Words are hot, guys. All right, I guess we won't be using my fingers to twist these together. Do they need to be twisted? No. Will it help me hold them in place together? Yes. Should I have done this with the speaker leads? Probably. We're just kind of winging it here. I'd, I'd like to get this just done for once. I have a lot of half-finished circuit bench products, projects. And it's nice to every once in a while just get something new quickly done. Okay.
So that's all I think that we need off of that board. It's interesting. I didn't notice there was like a hole to Big Bird land there. There's quite a few screws in this envelope I made that belong to this guy, I believe. What actually go to the board? I don't think that's it. Well, this is where the giant thing of tiny screws comes in handy. When you don't have you lost your bonus of screws, dig out a couple other ones to use. Oh, those now oh, looks a little long. Good. Works for me. Okay. That's not going to be, uh, of course. Well, a resolder there won't hurt anything at the battery compartment. We'll get to that. Guess it's time to mark our holes and do some drilling.
Oh. 